What is going on, everybody? What is going on? The Catch Fam. My name is John Dawson, and in today's video, we will be breaking down five must-start wide receivers moving into week 10 of the 2023 fantasy football season. If you guys are new here, this is all we do here all year round. Free fantasy football content, redraft, dynasty, and best ball. If you guys are into that, be sure to subscribe on the way in. But more importantly, please get in the comments section down below. Anything that you guys need, start sits, trades, waiver wire, roster reviews, whatever it may be, moving into week 10 of the season, let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Without further ado, let's hop right into today's video. All right, first on the list, I'm going with Chris Olave, who I've really encouraged you guys to keep in your starting lineup over the past couple of weeks. And he's given you double digits every week, except for week eight in the past four weeks. And he only missed double digits by 0.4 points in full PPR in week eight. But overall, he is still getting the majority of the targets for the Saints. He remains the most consistent wide receiver for the Saints. And this is a phenomenal matchup here in week 10. Against the Minnesota Vikings, the third worst team against opposing wide receivers in all of fantasy football as we approach the week. So I know a lot of you guys drafted Chris Olave as a wide receiver one or wide receiver two, and probably in a situation where you're going to start him anyways. You guys know for these videos, we avoid players like Terry Kill or Amon Ross St. Brown, who are no doubt must starts. And Chris Olave might be a no doubt must start for a lot of you guys. But over the past couple of weeks, between the Thursday night debacle, between some of the injuries Chris Olave was battling, between kind of the lower ceiling that Derek Carr was showing as a quarterback, there have been enough fantasy managers panicked about Chris Olave and coming off of a 16.6 fantasy point performance against the Chicago Bears in week nine, eight targets, six receptions, 46 receiving yards. And his second touchdown on the season, I say you continue to roll with him. Don't even think twice about it. He should be in your starting lineups against the Vikings in week 10. It should absolutely be viewed as a must-start wide receiver. All right, next up on the list, I want to talk about Deontay Johnson, currently the wide receiver 61 in fantasy, but kind of hard to measure that when, you know, he missed four weeks in a row due to injury and only played about half the game in week one. But man, in the last three weeks coming back from injury, he has looked like the clear-cut Wide receiver one for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Definitely getting the most targets on this team at the moment. We might see Pat Fryermuth return this week or next. So maybe Fryermuth starts to eat into that a little bit. But man, George Pickens does not look like he's going to be an issue if you are a Deontay Johnson owner. I mean, Pickens has had five targets in the last two weeks, eight targets in week seven. So there's still some volume going there, but the more consistent wide receiver in the past couple of weeks undoubtedly has been Deontay Johnson. I'm not saying that George Pickens is just going to do nothing the rest of the season. I know, obviously, he's been frustrated as a player. He's been frustrating to own from a fantasy standpoint. But man, Deontay Johnson going into this matchup at home against the Green Bay Packers. This is a tough matchup, okay? The Packers are a top six unit against opposing wide receivers in fantasy but the kind of the style wide receiver that Deontay Johnson is really giving you, you know, that week to week PPR value, getting a lot of targets, getting a lot of receptions was really nice to see him score a touchdown last week, considering he hadn't done it in like over a year or whatever it may be. Deontay Johnson, I just think is going to continue to give us those really safe floors and pretty nice ceilings as well. In the last three weeks, 12.9 points, 16 and a half points, 22 points this past week. So Deontay Johnson, if you own him a super safe wide receiver two to start and a super safe flex option as we approach week 10. All right, next up on the list, I'm going to talk about a Seattle Seahawks wide receiver. And no, it's not DK Metcalf. And no, it's not Tyler Lockett. It's rookie Jackson Smith and Jigba going into week 10 against the Washington Commanders, the second worst secondary in the entire league against opposing wide receivers. I'm a huge fan of JSN this week, who's given you 12.3 or more fantasy points in the last three weeks, two touchdowns in the last three weeks, four or more targets in the last three weeks, and 63 receiving yards in two of the last three matchups as well. Such a good matchup this week against the Washington Commanders. This is one of those secondaries that on a week-to-week -week basis, we are trying to exploit. We are trying to start players who are playing against the secondary. This is a home game for Seattle, coming off of a really tough loss against the Baltimore Ravens. JSN, I mean, has just been really consistent the last couple of weeks. I think he's a great play this week. And the difficult thing for opposing 
defense is that they still have to account for DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. So especially a weak secondary like the Washington Commanders, there's no reason why JSN should not hit double digits this week. If you do own Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf, I think they're fine to start this week as well. I know the last week or so has been pretty disappointing. Lockett's always up and down. Metcalf's ceiling has been really low this ceiling, but man, this matchup against the Commanders should be very promising for all of Seattle's pass catchers, but I feel like the best play at the moment is JSN. He should be a great flex option moving into week 10 of the season. All right, next up on the list, I'm going with Adam Thielen, who's still a top 20 wide receiver in fantasy scoring, coming off of a bad performance against the Indianapolis Colts in week nine. The Carolina Panthers looked awful as a whole. The offense looked really bad. The passing attack looked really bad. 7.9 points, six targets, five receptions, 29 receiving yards for Thielen in week nine. So, might be looking at Thielen, might be looking at this Panthers offense as a whole after last week, and it might be feeling a little bit queasy, but just don't forget, Adam Thielen has only given you single-digit fantasy performances twice this entire year, and now he gets the Chicago Bears in Week 10, who have been a bottom-12 unit against opposing wide receivers nearly the entire season. Generally, I don't like Thursday night matchups for fantasy but man, you just have to imagine this matchup between the Panthers and the Bears is probably going to allow for some good fantasy performances. And I, and I think Adam Thielen will definitely be in a good position to have a double digit performance. So if you own him, continue to start him in your flex or as a wide receiver too. This is a great matchup in week 10. I think he'll bounce back in strong fashion as we approach the week. All right, last but not least, I'm going to remind you guys that I still love Christian Kirk of the Jacksonville Jaguars, one of my favorite players during the draft process and the offseason, one of my favorite players throughout this entire season. Coming off of a little bit of a lower ceiling in week eight, though, against the Pittsburgh Steelers, had the bye week in week nine, just 8.6 fantasy points in week eight, five targets, four receptions, 46 receiving yards. So maybe you're looking at him as an option that you don't feel as good about because we look at this matchup against the San Francisco 49ers and we think this is a this is a good defense and don't get me wrong they are but the weakest part of this defense is the secondary at least from a fantasy perspective they're coming in as the 19th ranked team against opposing wide receivers so I mean not awful but certainly not towards the top of tiers so ultimately Christian Kirk especially if he's your flex player if he's a wide receiver too which he probably is on your roster I think you continue to roll with him this week coming in as the wide receiver 30 so far on the season but he's only given you single digits twice throughout the entire year every other game 13.9 or more fantasy points he's on pace for over a thousand receiving yards and over six touchdowns on the season so Christian Kirk, still a player that you can plug in and play and forget about it. It's a home game for the Jaguars. And man, I do expect there to actually be some points in this game, even with both these defenses looking pretty stout. I just expect a little bit of fireworks between these two quarterbacks. So, and even if there's not, I mean, Christian Kirk's PPR value targets the receptions. He'll get you there. He'll get you to double digits almost undoubtedly. So Christian Kirk, if you own him, keep him in your lineup. He's a must-start wide receiver moving into week 10. That'll do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the content today or find it helpful, be sure to subscribe on the way out. This is all we do here all year round, free fantasy football content. If you guys like that in your algorithm, go ahead and join the community and drop a sub. But most importantly, get in the comments down below anything that you guys need moving into the week, whatever it may be as we approach week 10 of the season. Let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And with that, I will say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.